Thank you very much. Good morning to all of you. First to Julia Stokes, I want to thank you very much for your service on the commission and your service uh, here today on this project. I did not know, Julia, that you had worked with both Cuomos now, um, work the, that you were, were appointed by my father, but it's a pleasure to be with you. Peter Lehrer, who is, as Howard said, a uh, national, if not an international, expert in construction and design. Um, I had run into Peter and he said to me in an offhanded way, anything I can ever do to help, just let me know. Well, there was something that he could do to help, and uh, I called up Peter and I asked him to take a look at this project for us. He, he worked very hard in a very short period of time, uh, and he provided his services pro bono to the state. So we truly are appreciative of his service and his expertise. Uh, Deputy Commissioner Rubito, pleasure to be with you. Congratulations on your service here. Howard Glazer, Director of State Operations, who's uh, been managing this project and who has done a great job. Uh, the renovation of the Capitol is necessary. Uh, it's enhancing a great asset for the state. Um, so it's a very intelligent project and undertaking by government. A renovation that is scheduled to take 15 years, however, is problematic. Why? It doesn't need to take 15 years to renovate a building not even a government project on a government building. You know, we talk about performance in government, uh, and we're serious about performance in government. I've had some experience in construction. I was the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. Uh, it doesn't take 15 years to renovate a building. It doesn't take 15 years to build a building. Uh, well, it takes government a longer time. Why? Why should it? Uh, why can't government perform like companies in the private sector can perform. Now, a 15-year renovation project um, costs the people of the state, literally and figuratively. The construction that's been going on on this building is an operational problem for the people who come in and uh, go out every day. It's an operational disturbance for the city. Uh, it is also um, impeding what is a great asset for the state. There's all sorts of tourism opportunities to this building. People come to visit it. Um, and when it's in a state of disrepair or it's undergoing renovation, obviously uh, that is detracting from the asset. So do the renovation. Do it as quickly, as well, as efficiently, as effectively as you can. Uh, that was the challenge. And as you've heard, Repeatedly, the timetable is being moved up. By the end of this year, the bulk of the work will be completed on the exterior of the building, which means what? Which means the scaffolding comes down, which means the crane goes away, which means we start to uh, enhance, once again, the appearance of the building, the tourism, etc. Uh, so we're excited about that. It's the bulk of the work. There will still be some work done uh, next year, but they can bring a crane in and out when they need to do that work, and you won't have the permanent uh, appearance that we now have. The work on the Senate staircase will continue, which is an exciting project, opening up the skylights on both the Senate and the Assembly staircases, which were part of the original design, so the skylights would illuminate those staircases. Uh, and that's, uh, that will be ongoing, and that will be completed uh, next year. Uh, the people of the state will also save money, over $2 million, because when you shorten the, the length of the uh, project, it also reduces the cost. Uh, so it's a win-win all around. And in some ways, this is a metaphor of the new attitude that we want to bring to government. On the far end, you see an illustration that I used during my political campaign of the uh, construction that was going on at the Capitol, the renovation of the Capitol, the rebuilding of the Capitol, the rebuilding of government on a, form, on a foundation of performance and integrity. Uh, and those are two hallmarks that uh, I hope are pervasive throughout the administration. I also want to thank the contractor very much for his flexibility and his time uh, and his uh, ability to work with OGS and revise the original plan to facilitate the expedited schedule. So thank you very much. Um, on that, any questions for Julia or Peter or Howard Glazer or Commissioner Joe Rubito? Michael? Were there any other, were there any opportunities in, in your report?
review of this to reduce the cost, to maybe even scale back some of the, the decorative features, or was that not something you wanted to do? It was something we considered, Mike. Um, you had you have two basic uh, two basic projects. One is repairing the roof. Uh, and as you heard from Julie, the roof has been a problem almost from the initial construction of the, uh, of the project. Um, the roof has to be fixed. It's unsafe. It's leaking. It's damaging the building. So you really didn't have a lot of options there. The Skylight project, which is, was a project that the commission had uh, talked about and worked on for a long time, uh, that project was already contracted, right? This was all agreed to, this was all contracted. Um, and at the end of the analysis, there wasn't a lot of savings to be gained by scaling back any work. Um, so the, at the end of the day, we expedited the timetable. Tom? Are you cutting back any specific work? No. I'm sorry? Are you really on the roof of the Capitol? I hear the voice, I just don't see the person. Hi. Hi. Are you really on the roof of the Capitol? Yes. It's an OSHA compliant hard hat, I just want to emphasize. <laughs> I will bring you with, if you would like, Liz, I would love nothing better than for you to accompany me on the roof. <laughs> and I will leave it at that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. You'd have to talk to OGS about that. Was, was there any in the original design plan? Was there any flaw that just stuck out to your team that said this should be done this way? Or what, what caused it to stretch out? So you know, long? Glenn, I did this on the federal side for a lot of years uh, when I was at HUD. There was a, a mindset of government projects. There's a, there's a uh, mindset of a public works project. Well, it's we drag it out. It's going to take a long time. It has to take a long time. No, it doesn't. You know, they build buildings in the private sector all the time. I built buildings in the private sector all the time. It does not have to take 15 years. It really doesn't have to take 15 years. It shouldn't take 15 years. And when a project goes on that long, I think it's even problematic from a, from a project management point of view. Yes. That is the original budget, and uh, we'll reduce that budget by approximately two million dollars in savings by expediting the calendar. So the project was coming in on the budget that, that was established at the time. I believe so. Is the work being done mainly by state workers, or is there a lot? Of no, work by an outside contractor who's with us today being supervised by the Office of General Services, OGS. Other topics, Governor? Do we have to? Yes. I just wanted to ask you, in light of uh, yesterday, you had publicly announced what your priorities uh, are for the remaining weeks of the session. Have you heard anything back from the legislative leaders on uh, when they plan to take up some of the big issues that are still out there? Uh, you know, Fred, you know better than I the uh, the cadence of uh, the legislative operation here. There are conversations that are ongoing. Staff is meeting. We're talking. Um, but uh, they just got back after the break, as you know. And um, I think there's six weeks in the session. There's a relatively limited agenda. These are important issues and they're complicated issues. But it's a relatively limited agenda. Uh, and I think you'll see more progress as the weeks go by, but I don't have any calendar or calibration of the of the rate of progress. Let me just ask you about that. You bring a degree of urgency to these issues that you say are very important to the people of New York. Do you have a sense that the legislative leaders share that urgency? I, you know, I don't want to speak for them. There is a, uh, they have a calendar that they're looking at. The legislature leaves towards the end of June. And my guess is that is their deadline. Um, I do bring a sense of urgency. That's what we're trying to, well, I, say, I would say, Fred, I want to bring a culture of performance, right? Uh, and if that means getting something done faster, more expeditiously, more efficiently, then so be it. I bring a sense of urgency on this agenda. I think these are urgent items for the state to pass. 
uh, and I will be pursuing these legislative items with a sense of urgency. But, uh, you know, the, the, there is a legislature, uh, and they're going to dictate the timing for their consideration and their movement. I can do what I'm doing, which is I'm going to make my case to the people of this state. I'm going to do it urgently. Uh, and then they'll decide what to do and when. And then I'll decide what to say about it and when. <laughs> Hence the dynamic. Have you yeah, the budget in the last couple of months, and they look forward to the second half of the section. Are there any lessons you've learned from passing the budget as far as dealing with the legislature and negotiating with the legislature? How did you need to get things done all day that you apply now going forward? Yes, I learned during the budget that prayer works, Nick. Uh, I, you know, in the budget, um, we also did a lot of good policy work in the budget. You know, we talk about the budget as if it was just a set of numbers and appropriations and the two-year appropriation bills. We also did a lot of policy work and passed bills that you would normally be talking about now, the Recharge New York, et cetera. Uh, so we, we did pass a number of policy bills, program bills in the budget, uh, if you will. But um, I think, if anything, it's reinforced what I believed coming in make the case to the people of the state. And if the people take a position, and if the people are mobilized, and the people are organized, in some ways the politicians will follow. You, you tend, we, we teach children, and aspirational hope is that the politicians lead. Sometimes the people can lead and the politicians follow. Uh, and I am a big believer in making my case to the people of this state all throughout the state. I communicate every way I can, and I think if the people agree with you, ultimately the politicians will. And I believe in that function of the democratic process. I started making this case, Nick, in the campaign. And my campaign was a different type of campaign, thinking about it, looking at the poster. Uh, I was talking about these issues. I was as much talking about January in the campaign as I was November. I said that to you in one of the interviews, if you remember. Uh, and I think that using the time in the campaign to explain these issues to the people of the state actually had a tremendous benefit. Why did the budget pass? I think the people of this state heard my position, heard the facts on the budget for many, many months. And the budget passage was in some ways just the reaction to the dialogue of the past year. Property tax cap, the issues that we're going to be talking about now, ethics reform, clean up Albany, I think it's the same thing. I think this has been an ongoing dialogue for the past year. I'll bring more urgency in the next few weeks, but uh, I think the people of the state get these issues. With six weeks left to session, can you update us on the progress of the push to get marriage equality? Do you really think this is something that can pass in the Senate? Yes. Can you update us on talks and where things stand at this point? You know, as I said, it's, it's, um, at, at this point it's sort of binary. Uh, we are talking, we're discussion, discussing these issues. But the question is, will they pass or not, and will they pass in the next six weeks? I don't determine the calendar of when. Uh, and frankly, I'm less concerned about when within the six weeks, uh, but whether. And uh, I'm optimistic that uh, marriage equality will pass. I think it's long overdue. Uh, as I've been talking about that issue also for a year, I know it's failed before, but I think this is a different day. Governor, I'll follow up on that. Yes, uh, yes. What, what are you doing to encourage the Senate to bring it to the conference and bring it to the floor for a vote? You know, Yancy, I, I think this is probably Nick's point. You think of legislative relations as actions that happen within this building. I don't see it that way necessarily. I think the best way I can get legislature passed uh, they get the legislature to act and get legislation passed is by going to communities all across the state and making my case to the people. That's how I get legislation passed. If, if it's left to the hallways in this building, I lose. My opinion is the people lose. So I make my case for legislation by going to the people, which I will be doing, which I have been doing. 
We come into this beautiful room. We passed by all these governors, and this certainly has been discussed many times before. But uh, perhaps tying in with speeding up the renovation of the Capitol. Any chance of getting your father to pose for a portrait of the, of the governors? You're talking to the wrong Cuomo on that one. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you have taken it up, but could you push him along? Or not? Can I push my father along? That's a loaded question. It's a long answer. The short answer is no. But he'll take your phone call. <laughs> uh, Governor, Governor, why haven't we seen an ethics bill yet? And just what's the status of, of that measure? Same thing. All these things are the same. You know, ethics, the property tax cap, marriage. We have six weeks left. We're working, we're talking, we're thinking, we're negotiating. Uh, and, uh, but it'll either happen or not happen. Uh, performance is results. And we'll either pass these bills, uh, which I think will give us cause to celebrate, or we won't pass them, and which means uh, a lot of people have explanations, uh, need explanations for the people of the state. And we'll find out before the legislature ends. One more. But the difference is a tax cap bill has been written. There's no ethics bill or any sort of general framework going forward on ethics bill. Yeah, that's what you say. There is a general framework. There are discussions. There are drafts. There's been multiple back and forth with different people in the legislature. You know, different initiatives. Sometimes it makes more sense to do everything, just put out all the proposals and have the legislature re uh, respond. Uh, on some issues, uh, the beneficial strategy and the preference of the legislature is to have discussions before you put out a bill. So depending on the issue, you'll see a different strategy for go moving forward. Uh, but they're all just different strategies on issues. And again, this is, to me, it's, it's binary. We'll either pass these bills or we won't. The legislature will determine the timetable and the action, and we'll all be held accountable to the people of the state. What should I be doing in the meantime? Everything I can to pass the bills. What does that involve? talking to the legislature, uh, having meetings with the legislature, and going to the people to build the political support so the legislature, if they're interested in being responsive to the people and the needs of this state, understand the needs and wants of the people of this state. That's what I have been doing. That's what I will be doing. Now, what about that gas tax holiday? Are you, you know, the proposal, have you looked into it further? What about that gas tax holiday? Well, you said that you, you know, are you supportive of it at this point? Or? I am support. Holidays are nice ideas. Uh, not paying taxes is a nice idea. Not paying a gas tax is a nice idea. The question is, how much does it cost? Uh, and this is a state that is functionally bankrupt. So how much does it cost? And a gas tax holiday would cost the state, the receipts uh, that the state would forego, and those are numbers that have to be analyzed. Governor Cuomo, uh, you expressed disappointment in the New York Racing Association in the end of last week for uh, entering into a contract that would outsource jobs in uh, New York. Uh, the administration knew of this proposed contract before it was approved by the Racing and Wagering Board. Why did you uh, express a disappointment prior to the uh, New York Racing Association entering into the contract? Because I don't control the Racing and Wagering Board. Right? Well, as a matter of law, as a matter of appointments, I don't control the Racing and Wagering Board. So when you say the administration approved the contract, the Racing and Wagering Board approved the contract, those are not my appointees. I don't control the Racing and Wagering Board. So my position is that uh, I understand Naira's legal right to contract out of state. Naira is an entity that receives significant uh, benefits from the people of this state. Um, this is a very important industry to this state, and we're doing everything we can to grow the economy of the state. And whenever possible, uh, I like to see jobs created in this state. And this is a state-supported function an industry and exercise. And I reject, excuse me one second if that's okay. I reject 
the theory that we can't find businesses in this state to pro perform or provide this service. I reject that premise. And what I was saying to Naira is if you're saying to me, we can't find anyone in the state who can do this, we can't find any business in the state who can do this, then I will work with you to find uh, someone who can do it. Now, what I'm asking is why didn't you let Naira know prior to them entering into the contract of your disapproval of them doing this? When we found out about the contract, we did. At that point, the contract was executed and approved by the New York State Racing and Wagering Board. Uh, at that point, Naira said, well, the contract signed, time is short, they needed it for an upcoming race or something like that. Uh, so we're talking about now a, a period of time so as not to be disruptive to Naira. I mean, we don't want to hurt the tracks, we don't want to hurt the industry, obviously. But how can we get those jobs in this state? Is there something you do at this point? We're going to do everything we can, and we're working on it. Governor, with the clock ticking down on June 15th, um, do you support, um, do you think that a simple extension of the current rent control law would be sufficient, or do you support some of the, no. you think it needs to be strengthened? Yes. Along the lines of what the Assembly Democrats have proposed? Uh, along the lines, yes. Governor, oh. can I ask one last question? Have you gotten any feedback from legislators about uh, SUNY 2020 since yesterday? Have any contact with you? Or Many good comments. From legislators? Universally good. Rare, but that is what that is what has happened so far. Yes, all good. Yeah, I'm sorry, you said the state is still functionally bankrupt? Still? I said I've used the expression functionally bankrupt. I think it's doing much better now <laughs> after the last budget. Well, we, we have a deficit projected for next year. If you are saying that next year you still have a $2 billion deficit, uh, certainly you're not out of the hole yet, and you need $2 billion to get back to zero. But not functionally bankrupt now. I think we're functioning better. Yes. Have you seen any warning signs that, as we've seen over the last few years, that we may have to revisit the budget during the middle of this week? No. Why, have you seen any signs? If you've seen signs, tell me, Tom. Don't keep it as a secret. We're going to go to the roof. Liz, are you coming to the roof? I'm ready, Governor. Okay, let's go, Liz. Thank you all very much.